Elon gives us an update for Starship's first orbital flight. Starlink uses a record tying booster to place more satellites in orbit. Dragon shoots and suits bra are up next on SpaceX's mission manifest. And we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the news. TED Talk released their hour-long private one-on-one -on -one interview with Elon the other day. The Starship was discussed at length, but since most of you watching have already heard most of what was said before, I'll just play the part where he updates us on the timeline for Starship's first orbital flight. We're actually integrating the, uh, we'll be integrating the engines uh, into the booster for the first orbital flight uh, starting in about a week or two. The launch complex itself is uh, ready to go. so. Assuming we get regulatory approval, I think we could have a, uh, an orbital launch attempt uh, within a few months. Raptor 2 engines have been arriving at Boca Chica a few at a time over the past couple of weeks. Booster 7 remains in the high bay, now known as High Bay 1, and may receive those Raptors soon. Meanwhile, Raptor VAC battering rams have been moved to the launch site, possibly for Starship 24 testing as soon as it's fully assembled. This week, Bryce Tech released their quarter one numbers for 2022 concerning payload missions done both by companies and government entities around the world. SpaceX launched 502 spacecraft in quarter one, way ahead of the rest of their competition. China coming in a distant second with 38 spacecraft. But what matters most is mass to orbit, and SpaceX has embarrassed everyone else in that arena as well. And keep in mind, this is using Falcon 9, which maxes out around 22,800 kilograms to low Earth orbit. Starship can do more than five times that, so once it's operational, every other bar will look like Iran's in comparison. After a slight delay due to weather, SpaceX managed to launch another flock of 53 Starlink sats to orbit from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral on Thursday morning, doing so on a record-tying booster, successfully completing its 12th flight and landing on the autonomous drone ship Just Read the Instructions stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. All satellites were deployed successfully less than an hour later. Next up is the return of the world's first 100% private passenger crew to live on the International Space Station, Axiom-1. After several delays due to poor weather at the recovery site, AX-1 is currently scheduled to undock from the ISS at 8.35 p.m. Eastern this Saturday, with the splashdown slated for 1.46 p.m. Sunday. Then it will be NASA's turn with Crew-4. Their ride successfully completed a static fire on 4.20 in preparation for liftoff at 4.15 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday next week. The agency has selected SpaceX and five other American companies the opportunity to develop and demonstrate near-Earth space communication services to support future NASA missions, awarding SpaceX the largest amount at just under $70 million. NASA is decommissioning its current near-Earth satellite fleet so they can focus more on deep space explorations and science missions. The communications service project is valued at $278.5 million, and NASA expects each company to match or exceed their contributions during the five-year development and demonstration period. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. We're back to catch up on the current status of Spin Launch, a space technology company out of Long Beach, California, that aims to use a more unconventional method of placing payloads in Earth orbit. Basically, they're building a merry-go-round on steroids. On March 31st, the company successfully completed their seventh suborbital flight of their reusable test missile launching it at 1,200 miles per hour with an apogee of about 30,000 feet and after a minute of flight time creating a deep divot in the New Mexico desert. According to their website, the velocity boost provided by the accelerator's electric drive results in a four times reduction in the fuel required to reach orbit, a 10 times reduction in cost, and the ability to launch multiple times per day. First customer launches are still planned for 2025. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. I'd like to thank my members on Locals for their support that makes the creation of these videos possible. The rest of you are more than welcome to join our community. There's a link in the description below. Have a nominal weekend, and until next time, Godspeed. Now it's time for you.